the um, first of all, it it is about quality of life. Um, so when when we discuss about knee replacement surgery, either it's partial or total knee replacement surgery, it's about restoring the quality of life. So coming back to the question, um, the ideal candidate is the one who has that patient, either a woman or a man, who is um, dealing or struggling with pain, struggling with uh, mobility, and has exhausted um, other means of treatment, such as, you know, um, painkillers, such as uh, bracing, such as um, small interventions to deal with uh, mechanical symptoms and has not um, been a candidate or has exhausted, including the realignment surgery um, in which we try to correct the deformity. Um, and so those patients which have already gone through all these phases or when they come in the clinic and um, their symptoms are too far, um, too significant and um, they are old enough, then uh, those are the patients which can benefit from a form of joint replacement. Well, it, it, it depends. It depends where, where is the start date, uh, when um, the stage, um, the, you know, life stage of the patient. So if they start younger, uh, when they are very active and um, let's say mid 40s or early 50s, um, and there is no other uh, mean to preserve the joint, uh, so there is no other solution but uh, partial knee replacement, then of course it is expected that within their lifetime to re require one or two revisions. The um, average lifespan for a knee replacement, a partial knee replacement, it's pretty much equal to a full knee replacement these days. It's an average between 10 to 15 years dependent on um, type of activities the patient is undertaking, depending on, on um, you know, weight, height, and, um, you know, biological resources. Um, but for those patients which are fit and well, are very active, um, and, uh, you know, undertaking a lot of physical activities, which includes well, walking, uh, fell walking, uh, walking on, you know, a normal uh, flat ground, cycling, uh, gym and so on. Those patients will require a um, redo or, or so-called uh, medical terms, a revision of their knee replacement <clears throat> earlier than uh, those which are not as active or as demanding physically. So, um, Ultimately, the goal of, of a knee surgeon is to try to preserve the joint as much as we can and push the um, last resort of replacement, whether it's partial or total, as far down the line as possible. Um, so, again, the ideal partial knee replacement um, candidate is someone in their 60s, um, very active with localized pain to the medial side, um, and those are the ones which will do very well. Um, on average, a, um, a joint replacement, predominantly knee, knee joint replacement, the um, full knee replacement um, has a success rate of 84%. That means uh, 8.4 patients out of 10, they're satisfied with their outcomes from surgery. Um, and they maintain that satisfaction up to 10 years. Um, so that means about 1.5% patients out of 10 are unhappy with their, with their outcomes. Now, when it comes to partial knee replacement, it's a slightly different... Um, Although it is a joint replacement, a slightly different um, um, situation altogether because historically partial knee replacements were undertaken by surgeons who were doing mainly full knee replacements, uh, total knee replacements. So their um, 
numbers um, were fairly limited um, in terms of how many partial knee replacements we're doing in a year. And therefore, the outcomes were a mixed bag. So until probably 10 years ago, um, we've seen a lot of um, lower limb surgeons, um, you know, trained to do hip and knee arthroscopy, would once in a while do a partial knee replacement. So those, the survivorship and the satisfaction rate for those implants were variable. Now, in the past decade, um, using National Joint Registry and other other sort of means of, of, of uh, standardization, the number of surgeons undertaking partial knee replacement has been reduced, and a new new guidance and rule has been introduced formally since the. Um, uh, GERFT, uh, getting it right first time, has um, has been um, formalized nationally. And um, so someone who does less than 25 partially a year uh, shouldn't be doing them, should be sending those patients to, uh, to someone who does more. So since the outcomes have improved, and so satisfaction rate for a partial knee replacement is actually better than uh, in the average of 92%, uh, that means 9.2 patients out of 10, um, uh, are satisfied with their knees and survivorship actually is, is slightly better. However, there are various types of implants, of course, and um, sometimes they um, if you're, as a clinician, you're not carefully choosing those patients, um, you may have residual symptoms. So one of the other reasons that the mixed uh, outcomes of partial knee replacements was reported, um, it was because um, a uni, a partial knee replacement, is a lot easier to re redo or revise than a full knee replacement. So many surgeons would if the patient comes back with ongoing pain, which can be referred from the hip, could be referred from the lower back, um, would um, come back to to the uh, to the clinic, and if these patients uh, will continue to complain, then the surgeon will uh, revise them. Now. Uh, in, in case of a full knee replacement, the um, ongoing symptoms are not easily um, treated or uh, as quickly treated as some would do for a partial knee replacement. So um, they would think twice or investigate um, thoroughly why that full knee replacement is still painful. And more, you know, very often uh, those symptoms are referred from other areas. Um, so, revision rate is different um, still for partial knee replacement compared to total knee replacements um, in the, uh, not only the UK registries, but uh, around the world. However, uh, a certain type of partial knee replacement has proven that the revision rate is very low at 10 years, and that is the um, Oxford uh, microplasty implant, uncemented. So the revision rate is um, around 4%. That means four out of 100 patients with partial knee replacements um, are revised um, you know, at 10 years, which is very good. The risks um, in general for joint replacement surgery are you know, uh, general risk of surgery, infection, um, which is a concern. Therefore, we use, um, we use a prophylactic dose of antibiotics at a time of, of the uh, procedure. Um, there is a risk of developing um, clots, um, either in the lower limb due to uh, you know, less mobility post-operatively, or um, clots in the lungs, um, and that's called pulmonary embolism. Um, so those are generic rules. Of course, wound-related um, problems, so healing um, of the surgical incision um, and so on. Now, specific um, risks for knee replacement, uh, for partial knee replacement surgery is risk of fracture. So um, because we only replace a small part of the joint, uh, a third of the joint, there is a risk that um, that area can fracture. Uh, and that has been proven that can be due to uh, surgical technique. 
we have learned to mitigate that risk, um, so it's very low but significant. Um, there is a risk that you know um, arthritis may continue in the joint, so there is a risk of revision. Um, there is a risk that the implant will become loose um, and uh, need revision. Um, the risk in general for these kind of risks are fairly low percentage-wise, statistically, um, between three to five percent. Um, that, it, that those risks are mentioned for um, someone who is uh, of normal weight and fairly fit and well. If the patient is, has a higher BMI, then the risks are increasing. Um, and there is a, a calculator which which shows us um, exactly how are the risks, uh, you know, double, tripled, and so on. However, the risks associated with partial knee replacement are statistically 50% less than the same risks associated with a full knee replacement. The recovery is um, far quicker and uh, patients are doing far better in shorter term compared to full knee replacement. On average, uh, following joint replacement surgery, um, we expect uh, to um, mobilize on the same day. That means once the spinal anesthetic, which is the, um, um, you know, go-to type of anesthetic wears off, uh, the patients are encouraged to stand up and with a uh, Zimmer frame and with um, nursing support, we are encouraged to go to the toilet by themselves. Um, so that is called day zero mobilization. And it's done equally for both partial and total knee replacements. Um, however, because the incision is smaller and because the um, obviously trauma to the joint is, is uh, smaller than uh, in, in case of a partial knee replacement uh, compared to a full knee replacement, um, then the pain and the requirement for analgesia postoperatively um, is less with a partial replacement and um, the joint feels uh, a lot easier to walk on um, after the surgery. So these patients do uh, routinely go home uh, slightly earlier. Um, we have re recently started to uh, perform this type of surgery as a day case and um, usually at six weeks they are uh, pain-free and uh, walk unaided um, compared to a full knee replacement where at six weeks they use sticks, walking sticks. So um, partial knee replacement is far better in terms of uh, mobilization and recovery compared to a full knee replacement. Most of us will end up having a knee replacement at some stage in our lives. Um, and that is depending on, it's a multifactorial um, um, you know, cause. Um, so basically, um, we inherit, uh, you know, genetically, we inherit um, osteoarthritic genes, if you may say so. So we, ha we are higher risk if in our family on either mother's or father's line have, um, you know, history of osteoarthritis, predominantly the knees, then it is likely that um, someone like that will develop knee problems. And of course, uh, sports related injuries throughout the life um, and um, any any um, physical activities uh, which involve um, knee joints in particular will, um, will create or will wear out the joints quicker. So that means patients um, um, like so will end up needing a knee replacement earlier in their life than expected. On average, the expectation for replacement surgery is within 65 to 70 um, uh, age group. However, um, we all see patients with well in their 90s uh, with very good and non-painful joints. So um, it, again, it, it depends on the genes and depends on um, how well we look after ourselves um, and so on. But there is a, a very high percentage of, of um, or high risk of needing joint replacement surgery in our lifetime, yes.